Bonfire banter, behind the banter. We're here at Claremont Collections. We've been talking about this for a little while, hyping you guys on this. We did our little teaser video uh, a couple weeks ago now, right? About yep. two weeks ago? Yeah, and, we, and yeah, we got the folks on Motorsports Unlimited uh, Facebook channel. Yeah. They're, uh, they're gonna be watching us here too, so. So we had the legendary Bill Wilt out here tonight. Uh, and Bill did public access for, you said 30 years? 35. 35 years. You don't say did, I still do it. You, you gotta still, watch more. Still curly. <laughs> ah, I, I'm not up to date. I'm not up to date this time. Like you said, these guys are the big car guys out here. I just, I'm just blown away by uh, well, the I, aesthetics I, I, in here. I've uh, got a cure for that though. I always yeah. feature pretty girls in skimpy costumes. I did so notice you that. You don't have to be a car guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had the feathered girls. I know yeah. all about that. It, it caught my attention. Like it probably, that was probably what that's, it was intended that's for. That's what they're there for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> believe he's going to tune in to look at me. That's for sure. <laughs> it's the content that matters, right? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's amazing. They have an, an incredible power to attract attention. I can't tell you in the 35 years how many traffic accidents we've caused. I'm, I am serious. Yeah, I, I am I serious. It. Yes. I've seen the Seinfeld episode when the chick's walking around in the brassiere and, you know, Kramer veers off the road and he hits it. Oh, he the, gets it. Yeah, he gets yeah. it. He hits it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so, yeah, they but, could do that. You know, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's it's it is just and they seem totally unaware of it yeah that's the they are totally unaware of it how did you know these girls is it, did you hire them off of like a all everybody a on the show is a volunteer including me okay yeah. uh, so nobody said in fact there used to be a publication called um i can't believe i've audition news okay and there's all the people inside the show business saying for plays and things looking for yeah. parts and things like that and uh i'd call them about once every six months and advertise the spot that we're looking for models with figures appropriate yeah. for exercise wear something like that yeah. and uh we would usually pick up two or three and they would last for a couple three months because it's you know it's it, it's <laughs> i've said it so many times I could cut my work in half, maybe even more than in half, not having the girls on the show yeah. because it, it's There's makeup. You know, and, well, it's 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 no, it's the reliability. This is what oh, kills yeah. me. It's the reliability. That makes sense. Oh, it's, it's just We're having it's, our some yeah. own reliability our issues tonight well, okay. on our own. So. Well, the problem the problem is though, the, if you don't have the girls, nobody watches the show. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're in a rock and hard place. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So so you so you do it, yeah. but it's yeah. you know. <laughs> and you got to put on a big smile. Oh, oh absolutely and, <laughs> and the funny part of it is girls have an amazing talent uh give it five minutes and i'm enjoying that they're there i really am because yeah. this is because males like female attention yeah you know? it's absolutely and it, true it's, it's just an amazing power but it always surprises me uh that they're so unaware of it they, yeah. they truly are unaware of it you yeah. know when we would be at a car show on a corner someplace a restaurant or something doing a small local car show and all of a sudden we hear a small, little chirp of tires er, and then you hear metal bashing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sure enough you look over there and somebody just yeah. kept rolling forward and the line <laughs> stopped and the line stopped they're, they're staring at the girls you know yeah. it's an amazing power i'm and still driving oh my yeah, god yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing power they have it really is you know? absolutely but uh, i did want to also introduce mr al lipper oh yeah he's back on tonight uh, Our resident what, car guy. Yeah, absolutely. He wasn't supposed to necessarily jump on this episode, but Al's always here helping out, and he I couldn't have picked a best. better one yeah. to fill in on. So <laughs> yeah. take that for what it's worth. And yeah. again, you know your stuff. It's not like a, you're a little uh, bit. You yeah. know, I had to teach him something the other day when you yeah. were here talking about three carbs when there's six there. Apparently, they didn't teach him how to count. <laughs> oh, oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we do have Rob Brown, our director and producer over there. Obviously, this is up your alley, so uh, getting you out here was a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say the uh, number two distractor to men besides women is beautiful cars. Yeah. So, you know, we got, we got it all here, you know. <laughs> and your wife isn't on set, so you only got one of those right, two things going right, on, right? Right, yeah. Hi, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Jess tonight? She, she couldn't make Take it care out? care of the kid. Oh, that makes yeah. sense, yeah. yeah. Access needs Otherwise, we'd have him running around. <laughs> <laughs> Touching all the cars. Yeah, oh, absolutely. he loves cars. Yeah, he loves yeah. cars. Yeah, little kids, little little guys especially. I feel like not a great place unless they're uh, maybe put them in some tie their hands or something like that. Yeah. Oh boy, you could, you could end up with a heck of a bill here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, quite a bill. I think they were saying something I appraised a couple years back, like forty eight million dollars or something yeah, like that. You know, it's amazing. This is an amazing place. Yeah. Uh, I've lived in my home. For 56 years western suburbs are you from yeah, yeah from franklin park oh franklin park 56 yeah. years 
Yeah. And I've never heard of this. I can't. I, 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 I can't believe it. Man, this is, uh, everybody, you don't have to be a gearhead to enjoy this. I mean, no, this, this no. is a history lesson. Absolutely. It's kinetic art. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. an amazing place. And yeah. kind of right in the middle of the whole Chicago area. Yeah. I, it just jumps I, out. I, and I, like I was weaving through the side streets even to get here again. Because yeah, there's no like great way to get into here. But then here it is. And yeah. it's. Yeah, it just it just surprises me that this is here and doing the work that I do. No one's yeah. ever mentioned it to me. You know, that just, that's, <laughs> that's why I called you, Bill. Yeah, well, <laughs> we finally mentioned it to well, you. Well, yeah. but people are funny. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, last night after you put this thing together, and he's uh, a gearhead, but he's a muscle car guy yeah. and has an incredible collection of really high end big block Chevys and Camaros okay. and he just uh, uh, bought himself a uh, Viper so nice. he's got yeah he's got you know some really big end cars so yeah. I'm talking to him on the phone I'm telling him about this place I saw the little video clip you guys did yeah. and I says John you're not going to believe this uh, the place and we're talking a little more and he says he's well where is it and I said well I, I says it's on Cicero Avenue and Belmont because I don't think he's going to know Knox yeah, you know I, yeah, I exactly. didn't know it you know yeah. and so he says no I just I don't so we talk a little more I said well it's actually not Cicero it's actually Knox I've been there oh really and I said you've been there he says yeah I've been there. send me a picture so I send him a picture we're on a computer we'll send him a picture he says yeah yeah I was there now you'd think he'd mention it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's trying to keep it as a secret you for apparently himself. Apparently, keep it know? as a secret for himself. But what a what a fabulous place this is! Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I, they were kind of talking to us about how we're trying to market it and get more people coming through here. I'm like, just yeah, open just open, doors open a door. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, right. it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it yeah, sells itself. They're, they're starting with uh, a podcast full of good looking young guys. Exactly. So, I figured that was a good yeah. jump. Oh, it doesn't work that way, by the way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, I'm sure? I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely positive. <laughs> Been there, done that, tried it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> 35 years. He, he knows yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it really did. Women it, have an amazing power. That's all I can tell you. And Bill, how many episodes did you do, and how many episodes? Did you do without a rerun i remember you telling me yeah this. we went uh, one of the things i'm proud of is that uh, first of all you have to understand i'm not unaware that we're not nbc abc and cbs we don't have those kind of resources we don't have yeah. those kind of abilities we don't have that kind of talent i mean they they do everything better than we do they have better writing better acting better cameras better better yeah, everything not a yeah. better not a better host yeah. though yeah not no a they host. have a better host <laughs> uh, no, 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 no no question in my mind <laughs> So you say to yourself when you walk, I do anyhow, I'm a racer, I've been racing all my life, and so you think like a competitor. Well, how can we compete? Why should somebody watch our little access show and like that, they can go and watch CBS, NBC, or ABC? Well, what can we do that they can? Well, I have the girls on there. That's one thing I know they don't have the courage to do it. I'll, yeah. I'll do it, I don't see a thing wrong with it. I, I think it's as natural as water coming downhill, you yeah. know? What else can we do? Well, we can outwork them. Yes, absolutely. and you did. While while they're showing, the I love Lucy for the twenty second time. Yeah. We have a new Another show new on episode. every single week, and yeah. we had a new one hour show every single week for fourteen years without a rerun. Now think about that's that. Insane. Think yeah. about it's that. unbelievable. Snowstorms, rainstorms, uh, uh, blizzards. We shot. That's yeah. what it takes. Yeah, we shot. And so 14 years, and then I had a quadruple bypass. So I missed about a month. Slowed there down while a I was little bit. I said for about well, a only month. a month. Yeah, yeah. It slowed <laughs> down for a month. A month. Yeah. But uh, they, it was just it was just a competitive thing. That, yeah. That I've, this is a way that we can compete, yeah. uh, and I think it was pretty effective. And how many episodes did you do? Uh, right now, the one that I'm working on right now, when they closed the studio, is the 1,422nd show. <sighs> Uh, and Jeez the studio is closed for COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. so how long have you been shut down because the COVID thing? Uh, this is just about one year now. Okay. Yeah, just about one year. Are you going to get it cranking back up here? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for the go sign, you know. Gotcha, yeah. And they're, they, on the other hand, are waiting for the go side from the governor, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's everyone just playing a waiting game at this point. I know. There's Listen, I'll tell you something. It's something, uh, you know, we're all distressed by it. We're all bothered by it. There's no question about that. And I think it, it hurts all of us. But the fact is, this is really important. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got half a million dead people. Mm -hmm. This is this is something we, I hope, we better all take seriously. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, do what do what you know what's right and uh, try to use some common sense, I feel like, yeah. when uh, interacting with people and stuff like that. And then... At the end of the day, you know, cross our fingers that we're moving in the right direction. And, uh, you yeah. know. well, the, the only thing is, because it does sound like, gee, you know, how much could that help? And obviously, we all 
a minute and a half ago pulled our mask down into our laps you know yeah. because it's hard to talk through those things and all that yeah. but the fact of the matter is when people say well how much good does that do a mask with I don't know, but it's all we know how to do. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only thing we know how to do. PC. So let's do yeah. that. You know, and maybe along the way they'll think of something else. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's constantly changing, but uh, that's kind of something that I like about to bring it back into these cars is that how much stuff is constantly changing. And when you walk around this, like you were saying, it's kind of like taking a walk through history. I mean, because you're absolutely. going from 1910, like you're saying, till modern day, and just to see how stuff evolved over time and uh you know just walking around here really blows my mind of how much different like body styles and the size of cars has changed since you know every car in here from like the 50s and 60s or even before that is like 25 feet long it's a truck like, it's like ridiculous yeah, they're trucks well yeah. and, and yeah. also if you look at them they also can do different tasks for example when you look at something like from 1910 you wouldn't even think about jumping in that and driving to california so we don't need an interstate highway system then if we, if the cars can't do it yeah. well you go 20 years further newer and you've got vehicles that you'd be happy to jump into and yeah. drive across the country with because the technology got better in fact i've talked about that on motorsports unlimited several times people think it was a stylus pen when you look at cars say a 32 ford or something of that nature they're square everything is kind of square and then you go to like the 40 ford that's the round cars mm -hmm. yeah, uh, okay. uh, the fat fender era people don't really realize why those changes occurred they didn't happen because the artists got better it wasn't that it was the machines on stamping out those big parts. That makes we sense. couldn't say, for example, all of those like 32 Fords and everything didn't have a roof on them. They have an open section on the top that's got canvas with tar over it. Yeah, okay. Because we didn't have punch presses that could stamp out a piece the size of the roof. That big. As it moves along, we've got bigger and bigger punch presses. Now we can stamp out one piece. And oh, by the way, we can style it now because it's not just a piece of canvas with tar smeared on it <laughs> now we've got a whole metal piece yeah. and it had to do with as the technology evolved it showed up in the design of the cars we can do things now that we couldn't do then and it's yeah. if you go walk through a place like this it's so obvious to, to me anyway yeah. so what point did it fall off the cliff because i feel like you see some of these cars in here and then like like you're saying the technology is getting better why does every car on the road look exactly the same? i can give you the answer tell me i've, I've got it <laughs> i can too yeah. i'm gonna let bill go first yeah. okay you, he's probably <laughs> right <laughs> well no I'm, you might have the same answer the answer is because what we all want is efficiency we want to burn less fuel we want to be able to go further on a gallon blah 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 and all that mm -hmm. stuff well the physics is the same for everybody so if look. we get a shape that goes through the air efficiently inevitably over time they're all going to end up being the same shape yeah. there's yeah. there's no it's physics mm -hmm. physics is even for everyone yeah so actually, uh, is that the answer? You know, uh, well, that, that was one of the answers, okay. but that actually goes to a car that we have behind us right there, that Tatra. Uh, that's a Czechoslovakian car. Yep. And that was famous for uh, being one of the most aerodynamic cars at the okay. time. Uh, in fact, uh, that car was made, I don't know if that one was made pre-World War II, but the Germans, when they invaded Czechoslovakia, they stole a lot of that design to make the Volkswagen Beetle. Mm. And the Volkswagen Beetle, to be Nobody able to go on that. the Autobahn, it's more you know, aerodynamic and now, this and is, that. Is that one a V8? You know, no. I don't rightly know. No, it's not a V8. Yeah, a friend of mine has got a, a Tatra and it's an air-cooled aluminum V8 in the trunk. No kidding. <sighs> yeah, in the trunk. That's incredible. Oh, maybe it is a V8. Yeah. We Air love, cooled aluminum. You know, might be a good I idea if you keep it. doing this. You want to practice before we go in here. You know what, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll put it in my pocket. And uh, I'll use it for next time. I'll use it next time. No, uh, my other answer, my answer was going to be uh, safety. So there's a lot of safety regulations now. Headlights have to be a certain height off the ground. Uh, tail lights have to be. I mean, that actually takes over a lot of the design as well because you have to meet the template, the mold for safety standards in various countries. So exactly. because of that, you get a lot of. That's why you don't have cars with crazy position headlights and stuff because they have to be a certain height off the ground, and that takes up a lot of it too. It's mostly aerodynamic, I would say. Well, if I but, could throw one more th thing in, yeah. Make no mistake about it. The cars are better today than they ever have been. As far as what goes? Everything. They stop better. They go around corners yeah. better. They Not handle style. better. They 
they do, they do everything better than they ever. For example, performance wise, I'll yes. give you yes. an example that I think is the best example. Is everybody aware of the Mercedes Gullwing Coupe? Yes, you know, there is one upstairs. Doors? No, there is one upstairs. They yeah, got a Gullwing here. Yep. I don't believe an original. It. I don't believe it. <laughs> we'll check it <laughs> out. That's, it. It. That's, yeah. That's a multi. Come on down to the Claremont collections. Yeah. They have a gold wing. Multi million dollar car. But anyway, yeah. the thing that was so attractive about that, first of all, is classic style. It's a style that never you never get tired of looking at. All that's just fine. But that's not the reason that it was really the car is so incredibly well engineered. Okay. And in the earliest days when cars first started out, they were literally buckboards with an engine bolted to it. Mm. Well, that doesn't really give much chassis rigidity or anything like that, but that's what we had. That's what we knew how to do. So little by little, okay, we ended up with what we commonly refer to as a ladder frame. If you took all the body parts off, the frame looks like a ladder. Okay. It's got two long run pieces with a couple of pieces in between, okay. the ladder style frame. But there's not much chassis rigidity there if you put your arm out like this and, and turn you don't have much rigidity. Yeah. Now, why is the rigidity important? Because every point, as far as where the wheels touch the ground, the geometry is carefully figured out that, you know, there's caster and camber and there's, I won't get into the whole thing, but the point is that only works if the chassis is rigid. Yeah. As soon as the chassis twists, you just blew all your geometry at all four corners. Yeah. So it's really important. So they started moving towards what were called space frames. And what space frames were is take tubing and you've got a tube, and I don't know if anybody can see this, you've got a long tube about hip high okay. going the length of the car and one about a foot and a half down going the length of the car and in between triangulated tubes like that, yeah. this gives an incredibly rigid chassis. Makes sense. The finest example of that is the Gullwing Mercedes. Okay. It has a complete space frame. It's a, it's a brilliant design. Now, why did I go through telling you all that story and then telling you the cars are better today? Even today's average little sedan is more rigid than the Gullwing Coupe. Really? Because Yes, because they're all monocoque designs now where what you look at, when you look at the car, that is the frame. Yeah, it's like if you took a, a a shoe box and glued the top on, and grabbed each end and tried to twist it. It's really quite a rigid structure. Yeah. That's how modern cars are designed. Huh. So the the chassis rigidity exceeds the very best of the space frame cars, yeah. which was the Gullwing Mercedes. And the Gullwing Mercedes, what year are we talking there? Nineteen fifty five, fifty six, and fifty seven. Okay. Talking seventy years ago, still, yeah. Oh, yeah, and also yeah. had some other. Thing. I don't know how much you want to know about that. It's a brilliant car. We don't think. It's a big deal now to have fuel injection, right? We, 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 yeah. Everything's got fuel injection. Yeah, right. But this was before we had electronic fuel injection. We had mechanical fuel injection. And the Mercedes Gullwing Coupe has mechanical fuel injection that's injected right into the cylinder, which probably only three or four cars today actually have because yeah. they can do it a lot easier with electronics. Okay. But mechanical fuel injection is very difficult. To, that Gullwing Mercedes has mechanical fuel uh, combustion chamber fuel injection That's direct so, injection it, yes from, yeah. from 1955 it's it's amazing right it's an right. amazing car the well, way it was I, I, I believe that originated with their formula one teams mercedes formula one teams uh were one of the first to have mechanical fuel injection in their cars and i'm talking 30s yeah well you know, the, probably probably even better than that is the uh the slr mercedes formula one cars that were in the mid 50s uh, had desmodromic valves uh, you guys oh. familiar with Desmo Drop? Yeah, that's, yeah, like, I see this. Yeah, that's like Ducatis have where they are forced open and closed. And closed. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. There are no valve springs. It's one cam opens the valve, one cam closes the valve. Yeah. And you would look at it, and Mercedes did that with their Formula One cars in 55, 56, 57. Uh, and you'd say, well, why don't they still do it? And they don't. Well, because it's sort of a, a problem looking or a solution looking for a problem. At that time, in the mid-50s, valve springs only lasted three or 400 miles, and they'd start to go soft. Metallurgy today, the valve spring technology, it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, so uh, me, we no longer need desmodromic valves, and that's why we don't have desmodromic valves anymore, is because we don't have a problem with valve springs. And they also take a lot of adjusting. Because <laughs> uh, well, uh, oh, he, was, he was just saying Ducati motorcycles actually still have the, 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 their performance the, 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 the ones. Desmo Duke, and well... Yeah. They do it, I think, because it's um, something you can brag about, but it doesn't really have a function anymore. And the dealership can charge you to come in every 10,000 miles to adjust the to valves. Adjust it. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really, don't get me wrong. I, I, it's not that I like Ducatis. Don't, don't misunderstand. But it, for example, the 600, I just won as an example, the 600 Suzuki four-cylinder. 
Mm -hmm. Do you know what a red line? I'm talking about the production model, the, right. the production crop track it. Right. Do you know what the red line is? 9,000? 16,000 RPM. Holy cow. 60, so you, we don't need desmodromic valves. Right, right. We got something with valve springs that turns 16,000 RPM with a warranty. So, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's old technology. <laughs> yeah. I want to say thank you again to Al for jumping yeah, out thanks, and uh, uh, jumping on the panel here. I do want to introduce my grandfather here, Perry we Peacock. A, we got another old guy in here. Here we go. <laughs> what, he, do you, he, what do you mean another? Yeah, you know, what you, I know. I'm, I'm 30. I'm getting 32 <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. so I'm getting up there. But uh, he drove down uh, last night late from the UP of Michigan just so he could join the panel tonight. So thank you so much, Grandpa, for making it out today. He's uh, a bit of a car guy as well. Yeah, and we'll let you. We'll, we'll get you to walk around maybe when we're done filming here. You're but, not uh, going to believe this place. Yeah, we're going to go upstairs too. It's not like Bill wanted hey, to see this uh, go wing upstairs oh, and some uh, other stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's he hasn't even seen the whole place yet, yeah. so we have to take a little tour. It gold takes a while. Wing. There's motorcycles up there. No, no. gull wing. Gull wing. Oh, gull wing. Oh, remember Mercedes? the Mercedes? Yeah, he's got one up here. They, oh. they, they 300 me. 300 sl yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's hard to believe that's a easy yeah. two million dollar car yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I always wanted to get pretty expensive cars here as, as yeah. it is yes know? it is yeah and i always wanted to get somebody with a mercedes a going mercedes on the program and i wanted to start it out uh by a lift in a garage and with the car up in the air with a shot of underneath the car and start the thing by when I was 14, I worked at a place called Apt Cycle Sales. It was a motorcycle dealer on uh, near Lakeview High School on Ashland Avenue. You're nodding your head. You he know, knows you know, he knows Apt. And no Mike prosper. Apt was the owner. And I, and I knew him. And I worked there, you know, shy of 14. I'm, you know, polish. But the old mechanic that I was so impressed, old mechanic, he was probably about 45 to me. Was, <laughs> and he had a strong German accent and everything. And he would call me over from time just because I was supposed to be learning. He'd yeah. call me over and show me inside of the BMW engine and say, in a thick German accent, he'd say, this is what you tell how well engineered it is, where people can't see. And then he'd point out this and that, yeah. and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's... Uh, that's how you tell the quality of the work being done is what does it look like in areas where people can't see it yeah well what i want to show them on the 300 sl is when you look underneath the entire underside of the car is a pan there are no rough edges yeah. anywhere it's for aerodynamics yeah. and these are three removable sections uh so it's got a complete pan going under the car yeah. uh it's the only one the car that i know of that's, that's made like that now mm. the, the, the people who buy that car i i know that they probably don't even know they they have that feature but mercedes knows that's the way to do it and uh, i saw a great interview I mean, do you remember mechanics illustrated magazine it used to be back in the 50s and they had a yeah, i got some you want them yeah well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you remember tom McHale, the guy who used uh, the, he was the one that would that would uh, talk about mercedes all the time they did an interview with whoever the ceo and i this i was a baby then but uh, they interviewed him about it and they said, well, you know, Mercedes doesn't uh, really take any surveys from people to find out what they want in the new models and all that. And the guy looked at him and says, uh, strong German accent. Uh, we are the car experts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We build the very best car that we can build. Why would we ask the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker what they want in a car? <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and I thought. It's, it's typical German. It's, I was going to say, that's such a German it's answer. Such a German yeah. ad, but, yeah. I, but I've never We're forgotten. The best. And, and that's, yeah. that's why they have a complete pan underneath the car for aerodynamic reasons, even if the people buying it don't know it's there. Yeah, but you realize that Anzo Ferrari started at Mercedes. And when he left Mercedes, he started the Ferrari business. Because, yeah, you're telling me a piece I don't know, but it could be. I wouldn't yeah, No, that's God. Yeah. That's gospel. Okay. And the reason why is because Mercedes got out of racing. And oh, well, you're Anzo talking about a designer. Yes. Yeah, Anzo only wanted to do racing race right. cars. Right. right. So that's why he started Ferrari because they yeah, got I mean, out of it. Yeah, you're, you're mentioning a piece of history. I'm not uh, Well, they yeah, got out of it because of World War II. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so you're not talking well, no. about what happened in Le Mans? No. No, okay. No, no, okay. no, no. That has nothing to do with it. But, okay okay you know they got out of it because everybody you know back in 33 or 34 they were going to war production even though they weren't supposed to right and uh they were more interested in that instead of the automobile racing yeah well some of them didn't have a choice i know that porsche 
Yeah, one another of the example. He was he's tanks. the one that does, he designed their tanks. Yeah. 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 So uh I mean you can I know see how closely related a lot of the European cars were to each other. Engineering design and everything else like yeah. that because they fed off of them, you okay. know, off of the greats, you know, at the time. Yeah. Take inspiration. Well, I'm always, I always. The Germans had, they couldn't mass produce. Everything was so finely made. Well, I was, I was always interested in the Volkswagen. We're talking about the Beetle now, but the, the Volkswagen, it's the only car of which I'm aware, nobody's corrected me yet. It's the only car of which I'm aware that. One guy designed the entire car. car. Really? Yeah, Porsche. The Porsche did. The, Porsche. Beetle? Yep. the Beetle? The Beetle. The Beetle. Like Beetle. He designed okay. the entire, everything. He designed the fenders, the transmission, the, uh, the engine. One guy, one guy designed, one guy designed the designed thing, the entire but it was car. under orders of the Fuhrer. Oh, yeah, no, he didn't have a choice. Yeah. a people's car. Right. That's why it was named what it was yeah. named. Well, he was. He, he, his, his direction was, right. uh, I want the very best automotive designer we have and at the yeah. time it was and yeah. i can never say the first name ferdinand Fer, Fer, how is it ferdinand ferdinand porsche, ferdinand porsche. and yeah. he was the best and so yeah. he's okay you're going to design the people star yes yeah. so, you know you know it's funny too is like i think like almost all of his sons are also named uh, ferdinand yeah like they're all named ferdinand is it like yeah. the uh, it's like george george foreman, george foreman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah well and we were talking earlier too that tatra back there uh Green. it took in they took inspiration from that car to design the beetle Czechoslovakians, shout yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Mike? So actually, yeah, there's not a lot of uh, them around. You know, Jay Leno's got one in his garage. Yeah. Tatra. Yeah. I have, a, I have a friend of mine. In fact, some of the audience might know him, uh, Larry Claypool. He's got a place called the Ver Shop, and uh, oh, boy, he's going to kill me. Not remember his uh, Frankfurt. Uh, in Frankfurt and he's got and that's why I have I don't know if this one is one of them but it's an air cooled V8 mounted in the trunk yeah, uh, yeah. kind of a kind yeah, of a brilliant cool. piece while I looked it yeah. over closely kind well, of a brilliant even piece Jay you know and he's not no dummy oh no he's very sharp he knows himself. what he's talking about no, he no. can easily sit down yeah. here you know? oh, yeah. he says that's one of the best designed cars he's ever yeah. been in yeah. yes yeah. you know is that car right there and he mm -hmm. says you know for being a Czechoslovakian and hey his engineering <laughs> capabilities was unbelievable at yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, the way he designed that. That's got a solid pan from one end to the other. Uh, under the car? Yeah. yeah. Under okay. the yeah. car. Okay. So. Yeah. But it's just something that struck me as interesting. And I did always remember that German mechanic had apt uh, with what he had to say is that you can really judge these things by what you can't see. How did they yeah. do it in areas that you can't see? I like that saying though, it's just kind of like, you know, how do you act when no one's looking kind of thing. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're thinking is like, you know, it's going to be hidden. Right. And you know, you could, you know, you can not, fudge it. Exactly. Yeah. And no yeah. one's going to see it. It's going to be in the, it. yeah. And they exactly. will not do it. Yeah. You, you got to like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I do. Uh, and, but again, I'm a person that has great appreciation for what they make. If yeah. I could afford it, oh, I'd have a Mercedes in a second. Uh, not to show off. Yeah, I appreciate what they do. Yeah, you know, I appreciate right. all those things the engineering. that most people don't even know exist. Yep, that they're yep. in there working for me. I, yeah, I think it's amazing. You know, absolutely, it goes back to all those guys designing it and stuff like that. Is that how much do you care? You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it really comes down to. How much do you care to like all these little things? You have to be perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and it, it, it's it, it has to do. You know, when you look at the tanks that Porsche designed. Uh, for the Germans, okay. they had the same technical characteristics that the Porsche automobiles and being the most advanced technology and beautifully made, really mm -hmm. beautifully mm -hmm. made. Uh, although, I don't know, have you ever seen them start one of those German tanks from World War II? It's the um, big wind-up thing. Oh, yeah. In, in a, oh, it's... it's yeah. <laughs> I was one of those, Ferdinand, what were you thinking? <laughs> you know, and, and it goes back to what Perry was saying earlier, too. The, the problem that Porsche had with a lot of these tanks and the Germans had with these tanks was they couldn't mass produce them. Oh, no, no. They, they, they didn't you know, have the material. They yeah. Did, well, they, yeah, the bigger part is they didn't have the material, right. but they're also yeah. very complicated machines. Very, yeah, complicated. very complicated. Whereas we could crank right. out Shermans all day long, you right. know. And, and by the way, that was the difference in the war. Yep. And the, the difference was they, it was often said that, that one German tank could, could knock out a dozen Shermans on any day. So we made two dozen trips. But they always had 13. Yeah. 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 And, and that, uh, our <laughs> yeah. approach, no, but it had to do yeah. with uh, how we it's approach things. Game. You know, it's uh, that, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. It's, yeah, that's very cute. Nice. Uh, but 
we got a hundred sitting here. So, yeah. you know, yeah. knock out as many as you can. We got more coming. Yeah. But, it, but it really shows the philosophy of the people's thinking and all that. Yeah. You know? So uh, before we get too far, Mike had something that he was going to tell us. Uh, I think he was looking up something. Yeah, so I looked at the Tatra. It does have a three liter V8 in it. It does have a yeah. V8, okay. It's a three liter V8. And so uh, they did get some inspiration from the Beetle from that car, but they made a Tatra T97, which came a little after that. They made that it the Germans the, made. Uh, Czechoslovakian. Yeah, uh, in 36 to 39, which is, that's where the actual inspiration for the Beetle came from. It's, the front end is pretty much the Beetle front end. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was, believe me, when the Larry opened the trunk of the trunk of whatever you call it, hood, it's in yeah. the back. When he opened it up, and there's an aluminum V8 in there. I couldn't believe it. That's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's beautifully designed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was just surprised. And he had that thing. He imported it. Uh, I don't know what year. I should remember and that. And air-cooled. Yeah, and air-cooled. Yeah. yeah. Air it's just that's, more that's reliable. Not, that's yeah, why. That's yeah. You're right. And those, when you see, if you've ever seen the Paris to Dakar rally, where they'll have cars that are racing all the way from Paris down to, to South Africa. And yeah, they're I've going through. Yeah. yeah. Well, the chase vehicles, when you see these big six-wheel things, they're huge. Yeah. And they actually race each other with the chase vehicles. Those are all air-cooled air yeah. V8 yeah. diesels. Yeah. 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 Because of the reliability yep. factor. So they would take a, a lick and keep on ticking, but, you know, where the V8s with the water-cooled systems had a bigger problems keeping them cool. Yeah, and keeping water in you the know, system. You keeping water in them and stuff. Yeah. You'd have to carry so much water right. to make that yeah. rally where anything air-cooled is going to just cruise right on by, you know. Right. Just put more fins on it. It's, it's like a motorcycle. Well, it's, and it's one less yeah. failure point, yeah. you know, one less thing to go wrong. You know, I got to worry sense. about a water pump or a cooling system or a radiator yeah. or whatever. Well, we got some know. pretty cool engineering. That Tucker over there has got a lot of <laughs> cool engineering in it. You saw that you know, over there, huh? <laughs> with a helicopter engine. Mm -hmm. and, really? Which uh, one is this? A it's a lot of Tucker. It's an opposed yeah, six-cylinder. Uh, I, I should, I should right. point out that that is, uh, that is not an original Tucker. It is a original parts, and they've constructed uh, Well, a that's Tucker. the whole thing. When but he, that engine is original. When he went belly up, he had enough parts to do like 10 more cars. And that's what that is. is you know, there was yeah. like 47, I think, came off the assembly line that are all absorbed by collectors. Yeah. And then he had enough parts to do like 10 more cars. You know, they just didn't get assembled because he had to pull the plug. The, the big three bankrupted him, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't want him around. Right, right. they did the same thing with Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but that car's got a lot of forward engineering in it. You know, that guy was, Preston Tucker was Especially a pretty safety. smart guy. Yeah. You know, huh? Especially safety wise, yeah. that was its oh, big yeah. thing. Oh yeah, safety it, wise, yeah, it was way ahead. Had seat belts before. I was gonna say, what else. are some of these innovations? Did so they have? seat belts, uh, it had a padded, padded dash, dash, and yeah. it also okay. had. <laughs> this is a little bit different from now, but the passenger seating area, the dash is high, and there's there's like an open area in front. So the idea is, is if you got into a front end accident, you would dive down into that yeah. instead of being ejected from the windshield or something hmm. else. But I also believe they got, I think, if my memory is correct, that they had disc brakes too first in the United States. Well, they wouldn't have been the first, but probably the first of the big, the big oh. manufacturers. I don't know. Because the first car to have, the first American car to have Oh, no, I'm thinking hydraulic brakes, yeah. actually. Yeah, it might have been the first to have disc brakes. first one to have disc brakes. The hydraulic brakes, I believe, was Cadillac. No. I could be wrong. Duesenberg. Duesenberg was the first to have hydraulic brakes. An American the, car. Wasn't the Tucker, didn't they have the center headlight turned with the wheels? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And oh, really? So it can, yeah, that was oh, a yeah. safety So it could see around the corner. So see around the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And I know they, that was even something not that long ago in a commercial where there's a car that you turn and it kind of sees around the corner. Well, yeah. And it was like, it's, it's supposed to be it, a, They work it. I think Lexus you. had those yeah, for yeah, a was while. Yeah, it was Lexus. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my caregiver has a Jeep Renegade. And every time she turns left, the what looks like a turn signal or a fog light at the bottom the left one goes on turns yeah. right the right one goes on using the same kind of principle makes you know? sense yeah, yeah yeah um you know i'm not i'm not yeah, really sure about Duesenberg it right there's got road lights on it that turn 
Oh yeah, the red. Uh, yeah, that front, red car right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hate to be pointing things out. I don't think the audience is. No, they can't. Yeah. I, th- I think what we might do though is we could take pictures when we go to edit this one. We might be able to pop these pop in. Or, or, or whoever's yeah. or whoever's watching, yeah, he's come down. Come down to the Claremont Collections and come and see everything for yourself because it yeah, does not do it justice on camera. Right, you guys yeah. exactly. have to I, come and see. Even this I stuff. was kind of surprised when I saw the quality of the cars. He said it's incredible. Yes, I, I, can't, is, I just can't believe it. <laughs> you and seen you've only it. seen no. right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, I know, but he's got the big buck cars right here within this first three. Oh, moments. those are pretty big buck down there. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. wait till you see him. This yeah. is yeah. They're, they're equally distributed. If he's got if he's got the three hundred SL Gullwing upstairs out of sight, he's got some big. About cars. No, and right. I mean some of the cool stuff too. When we first came, we were tucked in a corner, like back corner. I right. forgot which one we had seen, and it was right. like some well, of the cool stuff. You look at the corners of all these rooms. It's, something's got to get tucked in the, the corner, corner unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like they're even even the ones that are tucked in the corners are unbelievable cars. Yeah. So he doesn't have a thirty six Ford. Is that what you're telling me? I'm pretty sure he does. I'd be surprised <laughs> at just about anything that wasn't in here at this no, point no, after no. I've walked around. No, no, no. But. uh it's a very old, what I really like about the collection is it's actually a pretty old collection. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of 70s muscle cars or anything like that. Yeah. It's all the stuff that me and grandpa like, the the, the 30s and, and, and 40s cars, and even some uh, 20s. They got a Buick 20, they got a 20s uh, Buick race car yeah. upstairs. Well, you got to realize that all those cars in that row over there are all hand built. Yeah, you know, and a lot of the Duesenbergs and stuff like that were all hand built. Those aren't real Duesenbergs, unfortunately. But I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. if it was, and these here are all hand built. These fantastic hot rods, the right uh, here. the Beatnik, the bubble you know, top, bubble top Beatnik, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, that, with I mean, there's a lot of hand hands on <laughs> fabrication and everything else that goes along. Wait, with I, it. I'm trying to get. Uh, are you actually his grandfather? Is that? It's, I'm. I'm an. That's yeah. his, his grandfather. I'm be. adopted. Yeah. Oh, I'm an adopted okay. grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to. Say, but he actually. I was going to say to you, dude. Yeah. You got to explain to him when there's six carburetors. <laughs> you don't say tri power. No. No. <laughs> no. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be right on everything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm barely right on anything lately. He's getting old. He didn't rip into me on that one. He must yeah, be getting right. old in oh, his you age. Saw it? You uh, saw it? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't want to say anything on air. Yeah. You know, if I'm on air. Oh, yeah. We're, we're on. Now. Oh, yeah. We're, we're so, on the interwebs right now. We're live via satellite all over yeah. the world right now. Oh. <laughs> Actually, it's true. We are all over the world. Yeah. I mean, if you so want to watch, I that's just, for sure. I uh, just am totally amazed by the person that assembled this collection. Yeah, I'd like cars. to meet him uh, myself as well. I, I know he still does. I would, he comes I would say something is that I like about the collection is that it's an interesting yeah. collection. It's right, a lot right. Of I, I see very little common cars. These are saying, yeah. really interesting cars. Um, I, I'm just, uh, once again, stunned that nobody ever mentioned it to me. <laughs> like, dude, and the one thing, too, is I'll look at some of these, I'm like, I've been at so many car shows that you growing up, and so I'm like, I've never seen anything like this. And I go walk up to him, it's a custom build or something like that. It's one of a kind, and it's like, yeah. that's why I've never seen anything like this before is because someone painstakingly made it exactly this way. Yeah. You know, um, speak to your uh, car collection a little bit before. I know maybe a little bit about the 55s. Um, how did that start and which one did you get first? I think I kind of know the answer to that, but. Well, I bought the 55 hardtop first. There were 55 Mercury's. They only made the specific body design two years, 55 and 56. And the 56 was had slight differences in it. You know, the front bumper and a little bit in the grill, but the actual body was the same. You know, the shape of the body. And the reason why I got into it was because you couldn't buy, there was no such thing as aftermarket parts. You had to buy parts that you came get them, like refurbed and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Refurbished parts because yeah. there was no aftermarket industry and there still isn't now. For, so, for what? Well, not for that car. 55 Mercury Montclair, you know, and the 56 Mercury Montclair. Uh, I've, I'm familiar with the car because that was kind of my era. I went into high school in 57. Yeah. Uh, the Montclair, wasn't that a, a regular model Mercury, though? Or no? Well, the Montclair was their premium Mercury. Okay. You know, they had the uh, custom and uh, okay. the lesser value ones. You know, at the time, they had probably a lineup of five cars, including the station wagon. Oh. 
So you're a fan of that particular line of cars, or well, I uh, because of the rarity. Okay. You know, and nobody collected them. I'm trying. The reason it's catching my. We do a car show every year. Didn't get done this year because of the COVID thing, but uh, in Riverside, and I was there. I think yours you guys is the red one. Huh? Yeah, yours is on your one show that before. Was persimmon. By the way. Yeah, it was red. <laughs> yeah, persimmon, and, and then I had a green Samsonite luggage in the trunk. Huh? Samsonite luggage in the trunk. Yep. That one was yours. Yeah. I do remember your car. Yeah. yeah. He was on. He was on your show. Yeah, it was a nice yeah. piece. Nice piece. Yeah. 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 But well, I. Well, they're yeah. gone now. They all got sold off when I really? moved up north. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. You know, but. It's, it was a phase in my life. Yeah. And now I got a fifty Ford. <laughs> Two door business coupe, okay. and uh, that he's begging me to come and take. Ford five window coupe. What year? Thirty six. Oh, it's Ford. That would be so, a nice piece. I'm trying to think. That's a that would be halfway between the square ones and the fat fetter ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would so, be a nice, I mean, nice year. I got that screwing around, but I'm slowed down a lot. Well, I, let me ask you. That's the question I have to ask because it's it's killing me. Uh, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying I'm almost eighty. I'm, next month I'll be seventy eight, and uh, I can't do it anymore. No, physically can't. So, I'm, are you doing your own work still, or no? I do a lot of it. Really? You know, I get a lot of help from. I mean, they, yeah, don't point at me like cars. And, I, I help and, with the house more than the cars. And Al, <laughs> Al he's hiding around here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and. Uh, you still have the flatheads in them and all? Huh? No, still, no, no, oh, no. Okay, okay. I got the flathead still in the 54. That's nice. all original barn find. Oh, really? And but He's throwing the, a six liter in the yeah, other one. Yeah, it's got a six liter in the other one. LS. You know. But, and you're still doing the work yourself? If you don't mind well, me asking, how Well, I do a lot of it. How right now, you know, I don't do the paint work or anything else like okay. that because you got to have a real professional style paint booth. It's a real talent, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah, and and, and the technology same thing with the upholstery. It's yeah. at the upholstery shop right now. But you're still doing some of your own work. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seventy three like, to answer your question. I don't know if you wanted that. Well, I didn't want to press it. Seventy three. <laughs> yeah. 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 Seventy three. Yeah. But the worst part was I fell off the roof last spring. Okay. Yeah. On my head, and broke my neck real bad. Oh boy. So I got the shakes and some memory loss, but. I was brought up uh, in the 70s and 80s in the boat racing community. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about that. So I did a lot of boat racing. Yeah, Rob, was, he was telling me that uh, you were involved in, uh, I don't think he's got it right, in the kind of <laughs> racing with the, had the Miss Budweiser? Well, they were the class just above us. Okay, because th those are... Those multi million were, dollar boats, yeah. yeah. Well, ours wasn't any cheapskate. No, okay. No. What kind of engine? They were car engines. We were limited to car engines okay. up to 500 cubic inches. They could be okay. uh, blown and supercharged and and uh, fuel injected, any kind of fuel. But when you're racing a mile and two thirds, you know, five times around. Yeah, you got to do gasoline yeah. or alcohol. You we used alcohol. The alcohol. You yeah, know. straight up yeah. alcohol. Yeah, like green yeah. alcohol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, it was actually <laughs> embalming <laughs> fluid. It was a okay. little. It was a higher grade of alcohol than green. Okay, that's why like, I've never even heard that. I well, don't, wasn't aware that that no, was. No, don't thing. be don't be impressed by it that much because uh, alcohol has less BTUs than gasoline. Yeah. Hmm. Now you might say, yeah. well, how come it? Makes more power, right? Yeah. Well, because you use more than twice as much of it for any given period of time. The mm. air fuel ratio on alcohol is six to one. Yeah. It's thirteen and a half to one on gasoline. Gotcha. So yeah. it has to do with you get more power because you're using a lot more of it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But okay. you gotta realize that alcohol doesn't dilute oil. So mm -hmm. a lot of the races use alcohol because they don't have to worry about spinning the bearings. Right. And, you and know. And, and they run that, cooler. Yeah. And they run cooler. cooler. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the main reasons why we used it all the time. The engine was less, and fine tuning it and everything was less critical. Mm. Okay. You know, yeah. when you're dealing with fuel injection and gasoline, you know, you got to have it right on or you're going to have a problem. Well, you're grandson imitation grandson apparently yeah. <laughs> your imitation grandson had told me on the phone that you were running with the miss budweiser well and, we did we ran on the same race course no no like I, the I, river 
I understand, but if, but if he knew the difference, the Miss Budweiser that uses an airplane engine. Yeah. Uh, well, a significant well, difference. Well, I, I was under the assumption there were like the Miss Budweiser, the Budweiser team had like boats for each different no, classes and no, stuff. No, Bernie, Bernie Little only ran the big guy. The boats, right? Okay, yeah. okay. Now, Bernie Little hired our crew chief to be his crew chief. Really? Yeah. Now, he's Bernie Little's gone now, isn't he? he yeah, he passed away. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. But that's why there is no more Miss Oh, Bernie. right, he supported the whole thing. Yeah, he yeah. supported the class. Yeah. And, uh, but he liked the quality of our operation. I wish I would have known I was going to be involved. I would have bought some pictures. We could again. We could uh, we, usually we're going to do this live feed. You know, we're going to have an edited version where we could pop some. When stuff When did up. you know you were going to be involved? <laughs> I, I thought <laughs> you knew not that long ago. I, I come walking in the door and, and your mother says, "Hurry up, get in there. They're waiting for you." <laughs> I go for what? Didn't <laughs> Jess call you? Cars? Didn't Jess yeah. call you today? Huh? Jessica didn't call you today. <laughs> yeah, she called me but to tell you you were going to be on the show. No. Oh, she just wanted to chat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Grandpa. She basically Jeez. told me she wasn't coming. <laughs> That's all she told you? Yeah. Because she was afraid your son <laughs> would be a little bit too hyper around all this expensive stuff. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. So I said, okay, I'll see you. And then she asked me how long we were going to be here. And I told, said till Sunday. And she says, well, we have to go out to dinner together. I says, fine. <laughs> That's what she wants. She wanted to go. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't so know that I'm, you were going to be asked to work tonight. You're going to have to put in a couple hours no, here. You no, punch the clock. I had no clue that <laughs> this was happening to me at all. Happening to me? I would have been prepared. <laughs> uh, I would have been, been better prepared. I should say that. What did you? Yeah. I mean, we can't do a big show and tell, but what we well, can do though is that we'll be able to pop a picture. Yeah, of us we're gonna this thing. I, and we could, but, uh, but you can't do you that guys, live. You guys, you know, can't do it live. live. Yeah. No, we can't do it live. <laughs> you know, our rig was so custom. The our crew chief designed it, the entire thing. His brother and him. Now the bolts are big, so they got to be towed on the side, which you know, like the unlimiteds. But he made a the tube of the whole trailer was sectioned off and he had gasoline, methanol, cleaning solvents, an air tank that was filled up from the air compressor because we blew everything off, soap tank because he, that thing had to be washed at least five times a day, the boat, the trailer. The front part of it, it was fifth wheel pool, had a big compartment that had swinging doors that popped out and you could swing a motor out each side and pick it up and put it in the ground, take the one out of the boat. We could do it in 45 minutes, change an engine. Jeez. Totally. And have Shit. it running. Did you know Ray Lumbers? Uh, sounds familiar. Drag boat guy, top fuel, public nuisance. Like That's the name of the boat. Oh. Yeah. No. Like, like this, I was, I was with you. I was like, well, I'm not. That's how he's known. He's a public oh. nuisance. We, uh, I knew. Um, he was a top fuel drag boat guy, um, but he went into um, drag racing, top fuel, and. Uh, Got in a pretty bad accident. I can't think of his name right now for some reason. You're not talking about Gene Snow, are you? No. Okay. Uh, but anyway, he uh, we used to kid him all the time because he would annihilate everybody and just come back, drive back to the pits with a top fuel boat, take it out, and just put the battery charger on. And everybody else was freaked out. They're running wrenches. They're <laughs> thrashing. adjusting valves. Thrashing, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're thrashing. And he's just got the battery charger on there. Gene Snow. <laughs> it was Gene Snow. It was Gene Snow. Yeah. <laughs> Gene Snow. Yeah. So he would go back out there and whip everybody's butt again. And I'm over there like, we used to park close to him because I was a crew chief on a alcohol flat bottom. And... Uh, do, do you remember why Gene Snow got out of it? No. All I know is that he switched over. To cars. Yeah, to cars. Because the last accident he had, which nearly killed him, yeah. they studied the films, did everything they could. No one could tell him why the boat crashed. Yeah. 
And he says, I'm not, yeah. I'm yeah. not doing that. If it's so, un so uncertain, so, we can't even so fix it for sure. So uncertain that yeah. if you study the films, he still doesn't know why it happened. Did they have the Weird. counter rotating props back then? You know, I don't know the technical details of it, yeah. just because Gene Snow was a heck of a top fuel dragster guy, yep. too. He was yep. one of the best. Yep. You know, I asked about the Ray Lumbert thing because so. Uh, <laughs> It's for the things that you know i've been doing motorsports unlimited for 30 plus years and uh i had a chance to get ray lombard who was the best of the top fuel drag boat guys around like blarney's island and all yeah. bigger events than that. Yeah. anyway uh so i says at uh, we use the uh, chicago access studio downtown chicago and uh, i measured the doorways they had two eight foot wide doors that you had to get through if we're going to use the studio which is what i wanted yeah and uh sure enough this Doors were eight foot and one inch wide. <laughs> so now I know the law in Illinois is you can't have a trailer wider than eight feet. So I figured, good, we're set, right? So Ray Lumbert drags his boat. I think he was out of, I want to say, Lombard. I'm just, I'm not positive, somewhere out there. Yeah. He drags it all the way downtown Chicago, and we've got guys and everything, and we're opening the doors to take it there. And it's not even close. The, the boat, the boat has got to be, no, but it's got to be eight, <laughs> ten inches wider than the doors. Oh, and I said, Ray, they think the law is eight feet. <laughs> he says, yeah, but nobody pays attention to that. <laughs> so, like, well, so they more or less look at the boat, and that's about it. Yeah, well, they, you know. we ended up setting the, the little area that enters the thing as sort of a garage. We ended up shooting the whole show there because we couldn't get it in the studio. <laughs> right, they had yeah. the whole studio set up for it, couldn't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Pivot, yeah. you got to yeah. figure it out on the fly. Uh, yeah. Well, we're using this and thing well, still. We're, well, we're still shooting the yeah. program. You know? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> that's why I told you earlier, when yeah. you, you know when we do a new one every week for 14 yeah. years, whatever happens, we're shooting. You we've, know? Been, yeah. we've been filming for almost eight months now or maybe right around eight months and we have filmed in the rain we have filmed in a snowstorm uh you know we filmed in like 100 degree heat so we're out of barely you know we got the tip you're of the getting, iceberg you're getting of, the idea of what you <laughs> what you've idea. had to deal with but. probably our best one was we're, we had it all set up to do a snowmobile show yeah. and i got it all set up and uh, you know with the girls and it's just a big rigmarole getting it all set up yeah and made all the calls on wednesday on thursday it started raining and on Friday, it was 70 degrees. We're shooting on Sunday. <laughs> the one girl said it best and everything. We ended up being in the back of the van with the back doors open, with the cameraman sitting in the back of the van, squatting yeah. down with the tripod, shooting out the back doors. So and and we're, we're watching to see if anybody come by with a snowmobile. There's like four inches of water on top of ice. <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while, every hour or so, here comes some, the one girl called it the Rainmobile show. <laughs> rain, 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 we, we, we just shot yeah <laughs> we just whatever comes by we'll shoot yeah. it you know yeah at that point like i said i i think that that's such a a point of pride that you said like to not have a rerun for like 14 years yeah i was very proud of that still you there. should be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. should be because we already know how hard that is to, to do it every you, week well, you're getting an idea but yeah. Going. Yeah. Yeah. maybe <laughs> that's the reason i hear yet I, maybe that's the reason i had to have the uh, quadruple bypass yeah <laughs> 14 yeah. years of that'll do it to <laughs> right. you you know yeah. Uh, yeah bill i actually watched an episode of yours the other day that kind of goes along those same lines uh you were at the chain of lakes chain of lakes to uh do some boat stuff and for some reason you guys couldn't do it and it ended up that a group uh, of guys with vincent's vincent motorcycle oh, showed up and and you ended up doing having a whole episode about vincent's out of it and you had no idea I tell, that was tell a great you, one i'll tell you i'll tell you exactly what happened you talk about uh yeah i'll tell you sometimes you just you know it's, it's better to be lucky than good yeah. uh we're leaving to the house in the morning i've got the girls i got the cameraman because we're shooting yeah, some well what are we shooting well i don't know yet we're, we're gonna go up <laughs> we're gonna go up by the fox river because you know they're starting to put the boats in the water there's got to be something you know about boat you know getting yeah. boats ready for the season so something well except by the time we get up there it's about 38 degrees and kind of sleet in the air where you yeah. can kind of see it it's yeah. not accumulating but you yeah. can kind of see there's sort of snowflakes and the wind is blowing and i don't have to tell you the girl in costume was with me <laughs> she was a yeah. good sport she, she really was oh yeah she yeah. was yeah <laughs> I give her credit. She was oh a good sport. i gave her a whole lot of credit and uh so we get up there and i don't know what i'm going to do because there is nobody going to fool with boats today. We're in no. fact, I'll tell you where we were. We were at, it's a uh, broken oar, right? And right. Broken, I don't know if you know broken oar, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. a hot spot. I've for, actually been there before. Okay, yeah. you know what I'm talking mm -hmm, about. Then mm -hmm. it's it's bands and bikini contests and the boats, yeah, motorcycles, motorcycle, boats come in from the and the motorcycles. Anyway, yeah. so we're out there and it was a brutal, miserable day. 
And I said, well, we're going to shoot. So we start shooting, and I'm doing the opening stand-up piece. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a motorcycle kind of pulling in. I couldn't tell what kind or anything. I just kind of see. And I said to myself, oh, my God, somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and so I quickly finish up the piece. And by now, as I'm finishing it up, because I'm going to find out if these guys are willing to go on camera or whatever, another one is coming in. It's a Vincent, both of them. And I mean, I haven't ridden a Vincent at that time in 30 years and hadn't seen one probably in 25 years. And here's two. And then while I'm like this, here comes another one. I'm, that's a, I don't know if you're a motorcycle. I'm not. No. Yeah, he doesn't Very, know what Vincent is. Uh, Vincent yeah. at one time, and for yeah. a good 10, 12 years, they were the fastest motorcycles in the world. It's okay. a British motorcycle, 1,000cc yeah. V-twin, uh, set the world speed record at Bonneville that stood wow. for like 12 years. So okay. it, it, it very sought after, yeah. you know. And, so you don't uh, just see three of them oh, you don't rolling see, down the I don't street, see them in 30 yeah. years. I don't yeah. see them, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah, they're so, pretty rare to come by. So yeah. I go over there and I said to the guy, blah, 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 fine, what is, you know, will, will you go on camera? And he's, well, we got more coming. And sure, here comes another one. And then one with a sidecar on it. Well, it turns out this particular Vincent 1000cc Black Shadow or whatever, it was a Rapide, I'm sorry. Uh, they have a club. And this is the anniversary date oh. of the introduction of the 1000cc V twin. And every year, rain or shine, their club goes on a cruise, and they were on this cruise. So I interviewed them, made Just a whole so show, happened. made yeah. a whole show out of it. It turned, I thought it was a great show considering we had yeah. nothing to work with, you know? It's also mind blowing to me that in such terrible weather, those guys kept those things running yeah and well, actually I mean, it was part of their challenge it's like it's right, like, it's right. like people that have british sports cars i mean part of that is keep them running it's well, not easy because it was like we were talking about earlier uh, how we said that cars are <laughs> way better than they are now it's the same thing back then motorcycles in the 20s and 30s you had to be a true enthusiast you had to be a mechanic so, yeah you yeah, had absolutely. to know this thing to be able to do that you could you couldn't just go and buy one at a dealership and go cruise around on the weekends you had to really know this thing inside and out and uh, uh, there's been so many videos i've seen of guys with vincent's and it's like they spend more time working on them so i'm not saying that they're unreliable but well, but they take a special well, they, touch they, they are british you know well yeah yeah, yeah. The, the british stuff electronics yeah. you also have to realize that the British rode their bikes in all weather. True. That's an island surrounded by weather yeah. all the time. So yeah. they're prepared to drive them whenever, yeah. whatever, rain, shine, blizzards, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's a, and they were fast motorcycles. Oh, was very fast. Very, in fact, very, interesting very enough, fast. I did a few years after that, just to finish up and few years after that i attended the you know what they do in in uh, the mid ohio sports car course once a year is they do the uh, what am i help me it's the antique motorcycles not antique that's not the way they put it yeah it'll come to me anyhow they have a big event thousands and i mean thousands of motorcycles uh that gather all at the mid ohio sports car course and they they do all kinds of competitive events of you know stuff we don't do anymore but they they have it there with the with the classic antique so yeah, I'm, I'm there because I'm interested in the specific, the mark that they, every year they have a different brand that they're yeah. highlighting. And I had done my work there. So I'm going to run to the little town that's next to it. I jump on my bike and I hear what I think is a Harley because uh, Vincent's a V-twin like a Harley. It has yeah, the same kind of style. staccato, you know, yeah. and comes blasting by me. And I mean, haul in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> and so I pick up the throttle a little bit and I, I don't, I think I could have caught him, but I wasn't trying to, but yeah. he was really hauling yeah. and I've kind of forgot about it. I mean, yeah, I'm a long way from home. I don't need to crash, you know? Yeah. So well, a few miles up the road, I see he's in the gas station and I slow way down and look at the, here I see it's a Vincent. I says, ah, those things are, they're still fast. Even That's why you couldn't even, catch them. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah, it, it, but it was, it was a surprisingly fast motorcycle considering they stopped making it. I'm going to, boy, I'm gonna, I should practice before I go on the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also have a guy back there who can check it for you yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was so the last year of production of Vincent motorcycles. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 54, but I'm not sure. Oh, well, we're going to test you right now. Yeah. We're going to see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while, while he's looking at, um, we got a couple of comments from people on here, and I wanted to point out to you that uh, uh, Denise Allen 
Ah, said hello. For oh, Denise. Uh, she's watching right now, oh, so she wanted Denise, to say hello. So hello, Denise. She's a thrill. Oh, I could tell you. I should probably tell you this story. No, give me a good Denise story. I, I can give you. <laughs> yeah. No, I can give you the Denise story. Absolutely. I know, Denise, should, what do you think? Should I do it? <laughs> we were. You want me to wait for her to comment? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a little while, I think. <laughs> She can comment if she wants. This is when we first met Denise. We were shooting at Chicago Access downtown. We shot a lot of programs down there. And uh, it's a constant thing looking for girls for the show. It's a yeah. constant thing. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so, I'm sorry. Real quick. Are you going to talk about Mario Andretti interview? No. Because she mentioned that in the comment. Go ahead. No. I'm sorry. To okay. But anyway, so <laughs> so we're in there. We're shooting a program. And I've probably got, I don't know, five girls. And it's, you know, I always round up as many as I could for every show. Yeah. And they went into the washroom, do makeup, whatever they do, you know, and they come back out. And, and Chris, my wife, who's passed away since, she comes, she says, you know, there's a pretty girl in the washroom that's interested in the girls in costume. What are they doing? And I think she's interested. I said, well, get her. If you, we've got more into the costume, get her if you can, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of a tactful way to say this. <laughs> oh, she said you could tell the story too. Yeah. By the way. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're already in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> My wife goes to help her with the costume and all that, and then comes back about five minutes later and says, says oh, Bill, you're going to like this. I'm just glad we got another girl, you know? Right, right. I don't know. Let me think how I can say this. <laughs> she, it's 2021, Bill. We got to be careful. Walking in, <laughs> she comes walking into the studio. Let's just put it this way. Her measurements must have been at least 38 by 24 by... 36. She, uh, you talk about built. I, I almost <laughs> fell over like backwards. a brick house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I almost fell over. Yeah, my wife was right, but <laughs> excellent for the show. You know? <laughs> the funny part of it is you have to remember that uh, Chicago Access is all public access shows. Yeah. And some of them are religious programs and mm -hmm. we all share the same equipment and everything. Yeah, yeah. So we're cleaning up and giving them their stuff back in the tool room and blah, 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 and all that kind of, we're done and everything. And, uh, one of those guys comes up to me and says, uh, you know, that was Denise Allen you had in there. It doesn't mean anything. And he goes, her father was a preacher. Oh. <laughs> well, we're not doing anything wrong. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, Our we're, show. We're doing a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all. But anyway, yeah, I remember Denise. She was a sweetheart. Yeah. And she was with us probably after that probably two or three years wow. something like that wow. yeah yeah so that's she, she was one of the feather girls yes yes yeah, for okay. two or, for two or three that's how that's, what I was that's how we first, acquired yeah. her yeah. was she saw the girls in costume and she was just program, hanging out and yeah. she was interested in it and yeah. oh glad to have you come on <laughs> come on down and she had the tools for the job did i did i do that good uh, you did you did just fine okay okay yeah, we're still on the air okay still, well they, right. yeah they don't take us down that quick okay it doesn't work that way quite but so um I don't know. Do we have any other comments coming in? There? Well, we got a know. question. Uh, yeah, what do you got? Uh, Uncle Bay hey, example. I, I, have got, I got the answer. For oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what you're trying to yeah. say to me. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. Vincent, <laughs> last year of production. The uh, last year, it says in 1955, one week before Christmas, the last Vincent came off the production line. 55. So 55. I said 54. I was a year off. So yeah. Close. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> no, I'm supposed to know those things. I'm you. supposed to know those things. Yeah. yeah. He's wrong, though. So I am wrong. But at least I can count. Oh, there it is. There it Bing is. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting. I'm just getting started. Oh hey, yeah. Hey, this 22 year old kid back here didn't even know what a carburetor was when I first started talking to him. So no. let's not even start there. And he's I, a car guy too. Based on watching him work there, I wouldn't offend him if I were you. <laughs> this is this is one of those. Yeah, it's oh, no, no. One I of control the whole show. Yeah. We take I'll care of Mike. Now. We take care this of Mike. This is one of those rare treasures you hold on to when you get one. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Like, Absolutely. Like Denise Allen. Like Denise Allen. <laughs> yes, we yes, kept yes. her for two or three yeah. years. He's yeah. not as nice to look at, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, he right. said the yeah. sound quality of the episodes he does is just <laughs> phenomenal. So, uh, but we do, we, we got a question, uh, Uncle Bad Example, my uncle. Uh, who we call Uncle Bad Example. Uh, he had a question. Uh, Bill, what was the f what was your favorite car you ever owned, and what was the hardest one to get rid of? Mm, okay, my favorite question. car I ever owned that I'm still uh, upset with myself for selling it. I can't believe I did it, and yet, if I turned the clock back, I'd end up doing the same thing. I, I had a '65 Pontiac Two Plus Two. Most people probably don't know what it is because they all they think about is the Tempest? GTO. Pardon me? Tempest? No, no, no. This is 2 plus 2, a Catalina oh, convertible. Oh, right. Catalina convertible, 2 plus 2. Where's that? 421. 
421 tri power, four speed. Actual tri power. Actual tri power. <laughs> yeah. I, I counted them. I counted them. Uh, but 421 tri power, four speed car, pause attraction. Uh, just a, a superb uh, vibrosonic radio. If anybody remembers that, uh, oh, I, I loved everything about the car. It was you didn't buy it off of Arnie Boswick, did you? No, no. He's the great Pontiac yeah. man of this planet. Yep. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. got more wins in a Pontiac than anybody else ever. Is he like thought. a Chicago based guy? Or? No, Michigan. Out of Michigan. Uh, no, no, you're, you know, you're right. It's, he's, uh, I thought he was around no, Chicago. No, yeah, he is. He's a farmer. Yeah. Yeah, he's a farmer. Yeah. Arnie, Arnie the, the farmer, farmer Beswick. Beswick. Yeah. Arnie the farmer. Yeah. Arnie he farmer. raced. But anyway, the, as everything. far as the, my 421, yeah. uh, it was an incredibly fast car. I would tow my 15 foot boat, like going up to Bangs Lake or something like that, and pulling out of the toll things that you had to go manual toll with yeah. at that time. Uh, you pulling out, pull, I'd race Roadrunners and everything with the boat behind me <laughs> and easily went. It was a very fast car. In fact, Car Life Torque. Magazine had the, mine was a convertible, they have a hardtop version of it, held their zero to 60 record for like 12 years, the exact same car wow. uh, i don't know why i didn't never hear people talking about the they always talk about the, the gto with the 389 the 420 is the same motor just a larger bore yeah. uh, but i will tell you what that was an awesome car midnight blue with black interior uh, oh it was beautiful midnight blue is a very dark almost black blue just a little tinge uh, awesome car now why did why did i get rid of it I was racing motorcycles, and at the I don't know anybody familiar with XR750 Harley. Anybody know what yeah. it is? You know what it is? He's yeah, a Harley it's a, it's a Sportster. Sure. Sure no, 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 no. It's not. It's just no. there's is there are no, no interchangeable parts with the Sportster. No, yeah. it's just strictly a flat track bike, a, bike. a okay. Harley yeah. Harley flat track by 750 cc. And they're re reintroducing a Harley as a flat track bike right. to compete with the Indian. To compete with the Indian, right? You right. Know, right now, yeah. and it's not going to be. You won't be able to exchange parts on that either. Well, yeah, I the, believe. Yeah. Well, the, I, I don't know what they're going to do there, but the. But, the way it worked back then, first of all, you had to demonstrate that you were you're capable. capable of it. And the second thing is, when they called you, you better have the money. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I got the call. Today. Yeah. And I never, it was $2,750 at Oak Park, Harley Davidson. I'll tell you a nice thing about it. Is it 750 No, no, $2,750. Oh, $2,750. Two, I was two, like, that's... 27, this, is, <laughs> yeah. this is 1972. That's, still, that's a yeah. decent that's amount of money, money back then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's expensive. It's three right? grand, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they, uh, they had it at Oak Park, Harley Davidson. Uh, and I went over there and blah, blah, blah. I'm talking to the guy. He says, yeah. I says, I've got to go to work right now. We're for United Airlines at the time. So I've got to go to work on it, but I'll come back with the money later and like that so I left I didn't think any more about it I come back in there about half hour before they're going to close with my van this time so that we could load the bike in there and the guy he's I'm really glad you showed up I says well why I told you I was he says yeah but I didn't really have any money from you and an hour after you left a guy shows up cash in hand wants to buy the bike i've never forgotten it that they didn't break the deal they, all wow. they had all they had was a handshake deal with me hey. yeah. and i i respect that kind that's of that's worth something yeah yeah, yeah that's take your hand out to someone make a deal make a deal and it's a deal yeah, you know, yeah. it's yeah. a deal no I, I always appreciated that i bet you wish you had that bike back well that's the funny thing <laughs> yeah. i ended up racing that thing for about a year and a half and i had a real bad ex i'm sure you know who jay springsteen is uh and kenny springsteen his brother Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, the junior main. Uh, I'm starting from the second row. Uh, Jay and Kenny are on the front row. And I hit the first turn between the two of them. Jay was in the lead. Kenny was really high, wide, and handsome, trying to swing down. Crosses down in front of me, takes the front wheel out, and takes oh, the geez. entire field out. I end up in a hospital for a year and a half. A year and a half? A year and a half, wow. yeah. Yeah, no, my right leg was... Um, Compound fracture, both the tib Ooh, tibula tibia. and fibula, yeah, but tibia. both yeah. have broken completely off with my bottom part of my legs sticking out at right uh, angle, all the bones sticking out and all that, you know. You know like, oh, it's terrible. It was terrible. You terrible. walk again, basically. Yeah. But, it, pardon I'm me? Sure you had to learn how to walk again. Oh, sure. oh that was the most amazing thing. When I got yeah. the cast off, I couldn't believe I couldn't bend my leg. I, I mean, I couldn't. I'm a pretty stubborn guy. Yeah. Uh, you could have sat on my leg. I'm sitting on the edge of the bed, and there's no way it would bend. It yeah. took months before you could even get yeah. it to move down. You know, yeah. still wow. but, Insane. But it was getting that bike. They called. They had the bike. I had to have the money. I can't believe I sold it for $465 to Pontiac. 
Did how long? How long later? Did, did, no, no. This is when when Harley called me that they okay. had the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to show up with the money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I sold the Pontiac to get the rest of the money I needed oh, to get the bike, and I gotcha. still, yeah. I still kick. So myself. that's why you say you still would have done it. Because no, I, I would have done it for this reason. I was so seriously involved that when you get up to something like an XR 750, that's you're seriously racing. That's right. not commitment. A, yeah, that's real commitment. It's, it's not your entry level. Oh bike God, there no, for, no, yeah. no. That's serious no, not racing. That bike. No, no, hey, it's no. a dirt yeah. track bike. Number it, one, a hundred horsepower. Yeah. Number two, and yeah. That wow. thing slid all the way around the turns yeah. and stuff. Like awesome, yeah. hundred horsepower and what? Yeah. Weighed. I can tell yeah, exactly. I mean, Go ahead. That thing was. Uh, awesome. I'm gonna guess. 500 pounds 330 pounds oh, yeah. uh, yeah. i've got a gold wing that's got 100 horsepower yeah. and that thing weighs a thousand pounds yep. and it's fast well yeah. i'll, I'll <laughs> tell you what me, i raced bull tacos at the short tracks oh wow. speed wing, all that, my bull taco weighed 192 pounds race ready wow 192 and i had a Trackmaster triumph for a backup bike and the Trackmaster triumph weighed 290 pounds uh race ready so the harley was actually a little heavy the, the harley was 330 pounds it was a little heavy for for a flat track bike, you know, there's mm -hmm. no lights or anything like that. But anyway, but it was the quest to get that bike and have all the money in my hand that I sold it. And the fact is I hadn't driven it in probably three or four months. It's just starting to rust. I could see, yeah. you know, down in the corners of the doors, you see the rust starting. Right. And, and I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm not really taking care of it. I really like the I always loved the car. It was my, of all my cars, that was my favorite car. And I've had a Corvette and I've had, I've had a lot of cars, obviously, but that Pontiac was really, really something. Well, and I, back then it's just, a, it was just a car. Well, it's that, that you was, didn't know it was going to be a, that was the yeah. other thing. That was, collectors. I didn't know how special that was going to be because right. you think, well, the next year there'll be something even yeah. cooler. The right. It's always right. 2020. Because it's easy to look back at it yeah, now. And because be, every year something yeah. better did come out. Yeah, and I right. remember the one time that I thought about selling the Pontiac before that, I went to the dealer, Ostro Dodge. If I'm sure I'm saying the name wrong. On Irving Park is Ostro Dodge. I don't know if they're there anymore. Probably not. It was on Irving Park Road in Chicago. Anyway, but I stopped because they had a uh, Challenger convertible Hemi four-speed Hemi convertible. I always bought convertibles. They had a Hemi four-speed convertible. I saw it in the window and so I went and looked at it. I sat in it. The engine, you have gotta love the Hemi engine. It's awesome, you know? And it was a four-speed car and a convertible, which is probably today's, for people who don't know, is probably a two or $3 million oh, car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, But, yeah. but, but who knows at the time, man. you know? And, I'm in right. there, and I've, I had my Pontiac on for these guys, is that your Pontiac? So we started talking cars, blah, blah, blah. The only reason I didn't buy it uh, it was bright orange and black, and there was just a little bit too much black on it. It looked really Halloweeny to me. Uh, I didn't like the Halloweeny look. It's not that I don't like black or orange. I do, but mm, somehow. Yeah, and I said sure. to myself, eh, by next by next year they'll probably have another fifty horsepower. I didn't. I didn't know that that was the end. Yeah, that, that was the end. They were discontinued within a couple of years, and you couldn't buy a muscle car, or a supercar, or anything after that. Yeah. Who knew? We didn't know then. I thought. They'd have something cooler because they always did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And you'd have to wait until the late 2000s before they before, even got, well, before they got close to that power again. The, the funny thing is today, as fast as those cars were, and they were, as fast as they, I have no doubt in my mind that everything we have today is faster. Oh, yeah. More reliable. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Better in every way. That's we were uh, not prettier. About, well, how much better in every way? Well, that's one of the examples. Better in every way. Right. Except for how they look. Well, yeah, but that's, but that's up to taste. A, that's, that's up to yeah, taste. Exactly. That's, that's taste. You know? Exactly. The, the, um, uh, some of the stuff that they've got out now, the Hellcat, I think, is an awesome car. I don't know if you've looked at it. What are you, the Demon? Yep. Well, the, the, the Demon's more of a race oh, car. I mean, yes. yeah, but, yeah. but the Hellcat is actually a car you can drive. You right, know? right. And uh, I have a friend of mine that has one. That's an awesome car. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, and it's, you know, a couple hundred horsepower more than the Hemi's had. I mean, it's an awesome car. But, like I say, who knew back then? I still, but I must tell you, if I could have any car that I had, if I could have it back, it'd be that Pontiac. That uh, It fit me perfectly that yeah, had glass pack mufflers on it i go in chicago down the side streets where you go under a viaduct lift off on the throttle downshift a gear yeah. let them back off you know you know what i'm talking about i see a nod in your head yeah <laughs> and i went to lane tech high school you know so was, i went to prosser okay that's right we talked yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so oh. it's but, you're making you're making al drill back there he's a pontiac guy oh, that, i don't know if you saw it on his arm he's got well here's through. the funny part about it that 421 that was in my pontiac it was a 65 
that engine alone is probably worth a hundred grand now. And that Harley, that XR750 I had, I sold it from the hospital bed for what I paid for it. I mean, it was clear I wasn't going to be racing for a while. I was really, really badly injured. Yeah. So a friend of mine wanted to buy the bike. So I sold it to him for the same price, wrecked, and I sold it to him for the same price that I paid for it. You could easily get a hundred grand for that bike today. Wow. Because they're just flat unavailable. Yeah. You cannot get them. Yeah. Yeah, so right. we're gonna start wrapping this up. It's getting a little late. I still want these guys to be able to walk around and uh, be able to see this collection here. I know Grandpa hasn't really been able to see a whole lot. And I know Bill, I don't know if yeah. he's gone upstairs yet, but we do a little tradition here and it's signing our ax. Yeah, so we're, we're a bonfire bouncer. We're around a bonfire, so we gotta have an ax. So typically we have the ax for the two of you yeah. guys who'd like for you to sign it. So you do got the, the marker right there, Grandpa. If you want to, uh, he's going to have the, the same. I can see there. the way his hands are moving. He's got the same problem I do. <laughs> nothing nothing <laughs> hey, works anymore. Do do your best, and uh, you know you can find some space there. Uh, but we do really appreciate you guys both coming out here. Yeah, it was a pleasure. I, I, enjoyed, yeah. it. I enjoyed it. Who doesn't like to talk about cars? <laughs> Absolutely. I, like I said, I, and we can talk can, for forever, oh, and, yeah. and and we're going to do it again for it, sure. Because we got that much was more what to I was talk about. Say too is that there's a lot more to to touch on. I w I was even going to see if maybe as we're starting to walk around here, we could do. You know, Know, a little iPhone video, maybe as these guys are walking around talking about it, maybe you'll yeah. capture some candid moments of them walking around here. Uh, and then I'm going to slide this over to you as well. I'll be very careful. There is no guard out here. So. You don't care where? <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, anywhere you could find anywhere. space at this point. See if we could get you space oh, on the other side here. So make it too Here's awkward. I have yeah, the same be, problem that he's in got. There, in here somewhere. Anywhere you could fit. But Gramp Grandpa... Thank you as well for coming out. Appreciate it. And uh, apparently you had no idea you were going to be sitting down on camera tonight. So That's what happens when you get I old. Put on a clean shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> I, Absolutely. I, I, <laughs> you didn't come with the holy ones. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> you know. This was a total surprise to me. Well, let's get you around so, here. Let's, let's show well, you guys the cars. And uh, I, I mean, I, I, I got to say, uh, you know, when I was putting this whole, when we were putting this whole thing together, um, I never in a million years dreamed that it would actually happen uh we've obviously been wanting grandpa on the show forever yeah. because me and grandpa have spent countless hours talking about cars and history yeah. and everything and i mean we've just been wanting to do this forever and we also wanted to do an episode here after meeting bob olson and, yeah. and coming to see the museum and then somehow getting a hold of bill wilt which I never in a million years thought that I would was a actually shot in the get. Dark for I, us. It was yeah. a serious <laughs> shot in the dark. I mean, don't take this. Yes. Don't take the. Don't take. The, don't take offense to this, but I didn't even know if you were still alive or not. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I, I'm I, not sure either. I had, <laughs> uh, you're very alive. Don't worry about it. I I had no idea if this if it was even going to be possible. And then when you replied to me, uh, and Mike was in the car with me. I mean, I was like a little kid. I was jumping very for yeah, joy. He, he was he was just flipping out. I, I yeah. swear he almost swerved off the road. Not, well, now you follow. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> oh, it's a very big deal. <laughs> So, <laughs> so is this is, deal. this is just, I, I can't say enough how amazing this is that we're not only am I with you two gentlemen, but we're also here at the same time yeah. I and mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much, Bill. Well, no, the pleasure is all mine. If I can say one thing. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Denise. Haven't seen her. Oh. Got to be 10, 15 years, but if you're still watching Denise Allen, good to hear from you again. <laughs> yes. Hey Bill. Yeah. You did a show out in Franklin park when they had the big burnout contest going down Main Street there. I remember you coming with the TV cameras and everything and you did a show there. And one of my cars was parked there and we had a long talk at the car. So maybe if you go back in your archives, you'll see us. Well, I wouldn't, I hear something that'll surprise everybody, I'm sure. I never tape any of the burnout contests and I don't encourage that stuff yeah. at all. And, oh, okay, people, yeah. and people are always surprised to hear that. And I said, yeah, the, the well, problem this was, is... This was hosted by... I don't care who police, hosted it. The Franklin Park Police oh, yeah. hosted it. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. I under, I'm not talking about the legality of it. Yeah. The, the problem is uh, I've been racing all my life. And I've seen you joints break. And the pieces come out like shrapnel. Oh, gotcha. I, you can take a person's leg off with just pieces of a U-joint. Yep. And I see all these people standing around and somebody... Do, uh, yeah, it's like just hoping that no, the worst doesn't I, happen. I, I guess what I'm saying is I think I know better. I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. doing that, you know, so. Yeah. Anyway, it's been fun. Uh, Are we done? Uh, 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 we got a couple of people that said thank you to the hardest working man on cable TV. Oh, uh, uh, Tom Hedberg said my gold ring isn't fast uh, <laughs> because that's Tom. He's got to do that. You Love you. It, you bring it by my shop. We'll take care of that. Oh, <laughs> hey. that's what I want to hear. That's what <laughs> I want to hear. Uh, and I love you, Bill Wilt. Uh, for, for Denise Allen said love you. Um, 
and uh, perhaps we can have a Feather Ladies reunion. That'll be the next show. Hey, Feather Ladies reunion. Yeah, I'm talking. That's yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and 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 if and if you'd be so kind, I'm sure we're going to have you. We'd love to do another thing with you down the road too, sure. as well. Yeah, so, that'd be yeah. excellent. Yeah, and thank you guys so much for letting us film out here. We really appreciate it uh, yeah. to open your doors and be so kind and so easygoing with us about this. It's really made us feel real special and uh, really proud of the fact that we've gotten to a point here where people are allowing us to come film in some awesome place and like trust this. us to yeah. do this yeah and i'll tell you something right now if you're anywhere near the chicago area come and take a look yes I can't absolutely i cannot believe it's, it. not only that but we need to bring the younger generation into this car culture yeah you know yeah. and get them involved you doing first yeah yeah you know like you yeah. you're a prime example yeah oh he's already is but, yeah <laughs> i'm a lost know, cause there yeah, <laughs> you know and but we need young people yeah. because as you can see we're getting old and we're not going to be on. around as long as somebody's got to carry that torch. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm already got old. I know what you mean. <laughs> you know, so and that we, was kinda, need, we need the young people to get involved in it is car I, culture. I believe like it's, I say, and it's Mr. Claremont is a guy, I forget his first name, but who started, what is that? Larry Claremont. Larry Claremont. Um, and I think that was why he really wanted to start, you know, making this museum and opening it up because he knew he had something special here. What? And that's why these guys had wanted us to come out here and shoot because they do want to, you know, younger get this to the younger generation yeah. stuff too and exactly. just really open people's eyes to it. Because right. I can't say it enough times, but I didn't think I was going to be so entertained by coming here the first time. Yeah. And now since I've been here the second time, I've already seen about three cars I didn't even realize I don't even see last time. So yeah. every time you come here, you're going to see yeah. something new. Something's going to catch your eye. Yeah. So it really is something to see. Uh, really appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. Keep stoking those fires and we'll see you very soon. Bonfire Banter signing out. Thank you.